Christopher, as a baby, he was a very good baby. He was just always so engaged in his eye contact. He was always eye to eye with you. And it was just the most amazing thing because he would just lock eyes with you and your whole heart would melt and, you know, you couldn't do anything but smile. It was very exciting, you know, having your first child, a little boy. It was definitely the best one of my uh, the best moments of my life he loves all his animals as you could see we have many of them <laughs> um, they take up a lot of his time. He really enjoys taking care of them and loving them and being able to tell people he has all those animals. <laughs> Hope is my dog. Hope makes me feel happy. He enjoys being with his friends on weekends. You know, it's so important for him that he loves to be playing with his friends and horseback riding is another one of his things that he loves to go and do. He rides a horse named Vinny. He could spend hours just being in his room at his Lego table playing and building and he's got a great imagination. Oh and he loves to bake and cook just about anything. He'll help me cook and bake all the time. His other favorite thing to do is be with his brother. Um, him and Dominic have a very special relationship. And um, they're just so silly and the best of friends. Um, Christopher idolizes Dominic and Dominic idolizes his big brother and he takes such good care of him. It's amazing to watch them develop the relationship that they've developed because it's a very special one. Dominic, it's my turn to sit next to her. I have to send must go to dystrophy. At 13 months of age, uh, Christopher was diagnosed with Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Um, I've often read, you know, from parents of whose sons were diagnosed that, you know, it was like getting a death sentence, and it is, you know. It's progressive and it's terminal. There's nothing that, at this point, that can treat or cure it. You know, as a parent, you're just excited to see him move, crawl, walk, run. Um, you are planning in your head to go outside, throw a football around, um, play soccer, do all these sports that um, he can't do now. But you're still, you know, I was planning. Well, I was at work one day and um, the doctor had called us, or called me, and um, it was September 23rd at 1.50 in the afternoon. I pick up the phone and the doctor's like, hi, Miss Callahan, you know, it's Dr. Spiro. And, and I remember hearing his words and the next thing I knew, I was on the floor in hysterics. And um, it was the worst day of my entire life getting that diagnosis. You see all these other kids and their, and their fathers. Chris had a really hard time accepting the diagnosis. 
um, or even asking what it was. In his mind, Christopher was at some point just going to be in a wheelchair and, and that was going to be the extent of it. It was almost, probably almost a year later that I had to, you know, print up a, um, a synopsis of what Duchenne's was that Chris really understood, you know, what Christopher's life was going to be like and what our life was going to be like. And even then, it still took him a long time to digest it and to understand that, you know, at some point we were going to lose our boy. You know, when you get a diagnosis of cancer or juvenile diabetes, not that by any means are they any less horrible or terrible or traumatic, but you know that there's something out there. There's some medication, there's, you know, chemo, there's insulin that gives your child a chance. There is no chance with Duchenne's. He's slowly dying and, and there's nothing, nothing that you can do. It just, it's just, it is, it's a death sentence. There's no other way to put it. He's probably the bravest person I know. Yeah. Thirty years ago, my two boys were diagnosed with Duchenne. It was a day in June at noon. So I recall that and probably will until I die. The doctor said they have Duchenne muscular dystrophy. And this is the prognosis. They will walk until they're about nine years old. They will lose their ability to walk. And then they will die at, in their teens. And they died at 15 and 17. So Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a disease that affects your entire body. It affects, it, it's the loss of a skeletal muscle protein, it's true, and that protein is called dystrophin. But dystrophin is present in every single tissue of the body. And if you think about dystrophin, it could be thought about as a shock absorber. So running or attempting to run or moving makes this shock absorber that's absent, makes muscle really make it hard to run. And so as this child is running around, because there's no shock absorber, muscle tends to degenerate. So every day of their lives, muscle cells die. So when that critical mass of muscle cells are gone, they lose function. So that means there's a loss of ambulation in their early teens. Then arm muscles are weak as well, so often by the late teens they can't move their arms. And then they die in their 20s. In this disease, and especially in my son's lives, there wasn't anything. There weren't any treatments. There was very little money invested in this disease, and there was very there were a lot of things that weren't known. How do we care for this disease? What do we do to help these boys? And is there is there something we could do to give them more time to walk, more time to breathe, their hearts more time to beat? So I, in 1994, had met a group of parents, and we started an organization that would be focused 100% on Duchenne muscular dystrophy, and the organization is called Parent Project Muscular Dystrophy, or PPMD. I don't want to hear the words out of his mouth, you never let me, ma, or I wasn't able to, or how come? Because I think that would break my heart more than, than him being in a wheelchair. He wants to play sports, he wants to be involved. I want him to be a normal kid, and you know what, if he physically can't do something, then we find a way that he can do it. You know, kind of like the sled hockey. So Christopher started playing sled hockey and um, he liked it initially, like just got on the ice and absolutely loved it. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> Give me this elbow pad. It's not that hard as it used to be. Oh yeah, we'll see. Wow! <laughs> ha, I don't need daddy. Cool. Christopher, you need to walk, honey. He looks forward to it every week. He gets up early on Saturday mornings, which is tremendous because he never gets up early. His whole personality has developed because of it. 
he's more outgoing. As soon as you bring up sled hockey, he lights up. He becomes so excited. He's brought, you know, his equipment to like family functions just so he can show everybody what he wears and how he wears it and what he does. Um, the organization is tremendous. It's just absolutely amazing. It is the only sled hockey team that is on Long Island that incorporates both people with physical and uh, cognitive disabilities. They all play together, they're all in sleds. Go Christopher! Go, go! Christopher is the youngest on the team. He's eight and the oldest is, I believe, 60 on the team and they all play together. Go, 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 go! It's a great team because they really took him under, the, under their wing. They teach him how to play. It's really become a really great part of Christopher's life. Look at him. I guess the thing that hurts me the mo most and that concerns me the most as a parent is, you know, the, the fun things in life, you know? that he may not be able to do. And, um, you know, we've kind of gotten past, you know, the sports and we've kind of leapt over that hurdle. But now, you know, like you could tell he, you know, you talk about girls or whatever and he gets all red and, you know, I just, I want him to, to experience, you know, his first kiss. And I want him to be able to go for, for his driver's license, which he probably will not be able to do going to prom, you know, having a date for going to prom, getting married, having kids, you know, going to college, you know, these are all, for Christopher, something that are uncertain because, number one, you know, you don't know how physically if he'll be functioning, or number two, if he'll even be alive at that point. Everybody... Everybody says Christopher Scooter is cool. And these are the things that consume me the most about him. Even when they are on your last nerve and you are just so exhausted and so tired from being up all night and going to work and it being a horrible day and you come home and you know all of a sudden they come over and they give you a hug or they just sit on your lap or they hold your hand and it's just like everything else just seems to disappear and and it's just you and them and that's all that matters my best memories and happiest times, you know, are when Chris and I and the boys are together. <laughs> we have the best time with each other and seeing Chris interact with his sons and just the love that they all have for each other and the love that I have for them, it's just incredible. I will never have that feeling with anybody else. It, it just is something that you can't replicate or even explain. Yes, Dominic. I'll get a few.